In this video, I'm going to show you some comparisons between Kling, Hedra and Runway to show you what it looks like when you try and turn a character like this into a living, breathing animated character with lip sync. I'm Hayden Rushworth and I wrote a screenplay that took me more than 10 years and I love it. And I am on a quest to try and turn this into a watchable movie using AI tools. Now I'm taking a stepping stones approach to getting that done because at the moment I can't make my movie with AI tools as they stand. But what I can do is work towards that. And so my little stepping stones process here, I'm, I've created the ebook and I'm working my way upwards. And you'll see one of the items on there Think something that we can do now is create an animated movie. AI tools have reached the point where you actually can create an animated movie. In fact, last year, Where the Robots Grow uh, became the world's first AI fueled animated feature film. So if you're serious about becoming an AI filmmaker and specifically a narrative filmmaker telling stories using AI tools, creating children's stories is an incredibly important and helpful place to start because children don't care about the stuff that we think we should be caring about. Even lip sync movement, it doesn't matter if it's not that close. What children care about is a great story. And that is what you and I should be focusing on above all else when we're creating AI narratives. It's the narrative not the AI part. The AI part is how you bring it to life. It was months ago that I created this character here and uh, I just thought an adorable looking character. And I've always thought I want to just bring that character to life. It would be fun. Now recently, Runway has brought out Act One, Hedra has just popped up and Kling has a great lip sync tool. So I wanted to see what they would look like. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the results of my little test, trying to bring this character to life uh, with the help of my daughter, Daisy. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. And so these are the results. First runway, act one. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. Now what I loved about that, what Runway has done really, really well is bringing facial features to life. And by the way, Hedra doesn't do this and Kling doesn't do this. Runway Act 1 is the only one of these three that actually tries to take the facial expressions and movements of the, of the source video and apply them to this shot. What it doesn't do is take any of the other physicality, any of the other movements. What it does try and do is replicate the expression. And that's really, really important because if you're trying to tell stories, you need to be able to have control of expression and emotion and eyes and facial features. This was a really, really impressive result. I was especially impressed with the very last moment where Daisy said, and plus, he's bold. Plus, it's bold. And the, the, that tiny micro expression on her, with her eyes and the tilt of her head, Runway managed to replicate that. It was really, really good. I was really impressed with that. Now the image quality gets a little bit softer, which I don't mind, except if the rest of the image is sharp and the face becomes a little softer, there's a disconnect between the, the image quality of the face and the image quality of the rest of the image. And that, that is that disconnect that is a little bit of a challenge, but beautifully done. So next was Kling. And in order to do this, first I brought the image into Kling and I animated the image with a prompt. A, a cute little alien is showing off his toy and excitedly and happily. And that gave us this. And this was great. The sharpness and clarity is tremendous. There's still guesswork going on with things like hands, but I love the expression. I love that there's eyebrow movement, there's um, all kinds of expression and other animation going on. And that's the advantage over Runway's Act 1 is that you've got full body expression going on, but you don't have control over the facial expression. So once you've animated your still shot into a video, the next step is so easy. You just go down to the lip sync button and then a few minutes later you have the lip synced version. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. And it looks great. Very sharp, very clean, very animated. Now, it just so happens that the dialogue kind of matched, coincidentally, some of the, the movements of the character. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, 
it's bold. Which gives you the illusion that the character is actually moving in time to the words, but that's not the case, it was just coincidence. But even so, if you've got generally the same emotion for the delivery, kind of excited, sad, happy, angry, scared, at least you can put dialogue that matches that. So then I came on to Hedra and <laughs> I it took me six or seven attempts to get one result and I kept getting bombed out and it kept failing for reasons that it never told me so I had no idea was it the picture was it the audio was it the prompt I, I, there was nothing to tell me only that it had failed was it my internet connection was it the fact that I I left the browser because it tells you please leave the browser open whilst this is generating it doesn't help that you have no idea how long it's going to be generating for. So you're sitting there going, well, how long do I just sit here not using my computer for? Uh, well, anyway, eventually I got some results and here was a really, really lovely one from Hedra. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. Now, there was no blinking, uh, which is what I got with Kling, but there was lots of movement going on here. And the lip sync with all three is good enough. It wasn't perfect, but I loved how sharp it was. So I thought I'd try a different character to see uh, just for the fun of it. So I generated this little girl in, in Mid Journey and a female version just to see if it was, if I'd get similar results from a slightly different character. She was adorable too. And then I also in Mid Journey expanded out. I went into editor and kind of gave her a bit more uh, space so I could see how it would work with a, a, a smaller face in the frame. So first with Kling, I tried the wide shot and I, I animated the wide shot and, uh, you know, excited little girl um, showing off a toy and it got great expression on the face, great expression in the eyes, some movement there and even holding up the dolly. But then when I tried to do the lip sync, that's when it all fell apart and uh, Kling couldn't, said it couldn't find an identifiable face. So then I tried Hedra to see, if I managed to get Hedra to work again and Hedra did a great job. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. You see, there's even movement uh, from the other character going on as well. And so the animation generally worked really, really well. And the lip sync was, was really good. I went back to the close up to see if Kling could have another go. And I got this shot where first I animated the, the, the still shot and looked beautiful, looked adorable. And then when I added lip sync in. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. It's just great, just great. Again, coincidentally, the movement of the character uh, coincided with Daisy saying, plus it's bold. Um, and that was a coincidence, but a happy one. But still, it was, it was great. I gave Hedra a go, and this is what we ended up with. This is a cat. Well, it was supposed to be. It looks like an owl. Plus, it's bold. Now, you don't get the blinking, but you get lots of other movement going on. Um, and it was just great. I'd run out of credits with Runway with my one shot. And by the way, this is the thing with Runway. The free version gives you what, 125 credits. That doesn't last long and you get it's a one off opportunity. So in terms of which tool is best, in reality, all of them work. Any one of them could tell a great story if you were trying to entertain children with a really engaging children's story. For me, I would probably stick with Kling if I'm honest. Uh, I get the best bang for buck. I get to use it with my existing workflow. The costs of generation are a factor in all of this, except that you don't have to regenerate as often to get an acceptable result. 